There's been a lot of talk about the tropics over the past couple of weeks, and for good reason with the Atlantic being so active. A lot of great questions have come to my social media pages, and there was one in particular that I found pretty interesting, and it concerned the Great Lakes. They're responsible for some pretty big blizzards around here, and a couple of you wanted to know, could they produce a hurricane? Now, before you laugh, the answer is kind of and it's happened before. On this week's episode of Heather's Weather Wise, I'm gonna take you back 22 years almost to the date as we talk about Hurricane Huron. If you wanna get technical with it, a hurricane is any tropical cyclone in the Western Hemisphere with winds of at least 74 miles per hour. That's it, just wind. Although technically another sub requirement is that the storm has what we call a warm core, whereas the temperature gets warmer as you go in towards the center of the storm. Now, in September of 1996, water temperatures on Lake Huron were 68 degrees. Warm, but certainly not that bath water temperature. But air temperatures were definitely on the warm side, especially during the first half of September for the Midwest and Northeast. But cold air was just getting ready to move into parts of the Great Lakes, and it's that difference in air temperature that would eventually spawn an area of low pressure. It first popped up on September 11th, but then headed southeastward into September 12th. Even at this point, it was still barely a blip on the surface map with a minimum central pressure of just 1,012 millibars. For reference, a moderately strong area of low pressure this time of the year might have a central pressure around 1,004 millibars or so. But going into the day on Friday, September 13th, the storm would move over Lake Huron, where remember water temperatures were in the upper 60s, and the pressure would start to drop as the storm strengthened. It went from 1,012 millibars to 1,006 millibars. Eventually, an upper level low would move in from the northwest and inject a ton of energy into the system. Here's what that looked like on radar. By the time we get to Saturday, September the 15th, the storm reached its strongest point, reaching a minimum central pressure of 993 millibars. And look at those wind speeds, 73 miles per hour. Remember, I said that hurricane winds start at 74 miles per hour. What was even more impressive about this system was that on satellite, it started to develop its own eye. It measured about 19 miles across, and it even had convective thunderstorms around it that sort of resembled an eye wall. For reference, Hurricane Florence last week had an eye wall that spanned about 35 miles. But as we so often see with tropical systems, or in this case, a strong area of low pressure, the strength of the storm is also often its downfall. You see, those really strong winds from what we called Hurricane Huron would eventually churn up the waves severely over Lake Huron with wave heights approaching 20 feet at times. Remember, the water temperature started off at 68 degrees, but on that day, September 15th, because of what we call upwelling, Lake Huron's temperature dropped to 54 degrees and the storm very quickly ran out of energy, which is good because shortly after, as the storm weakened, it would move across Southern Ontario and it would affect the Buffalo area as well. Now, our maximum reported wind gust was 18 miles per hour, so that certainly wasn't an issue, but there was a lot of widespread rain across parts of Western New York and upstate as well. It did lead to some flooding, about an inch and a half of rain at the Buffalo airport. That would eventually help us to get to one of the top 10 wettest Septembers on record with over seven and a half inches of rain across parts of the area. While the Huron hurricane didn't officially go down as part of the Atlantic hurricane season in the year 1996, it certainly was an interesting case that kind of makes you wonder what else the Great Lakes could do, especially as we get ready to go into the cold season. Hope you enjoyed this little trip back in time for a little piece of weather history. If you missed any previous episodes of Heather's Weather Wise, just head over to the WGRZ YouTube page. You can find all of the episodes there in the Heather's Weather Wise YouTube playlist. I'll be back with a new episode next week, but remember until then, it's good to be a geek.